big TB drugs. Guys, before we get into the drugs, we have the five TB tips. First is men's last six to 12 months. Guys, it's a long duration. Second is N95 mask is worn at all times. Third is that the family is tested for TB. Number four is sputum samples are done every two to four weeks. And number five, three negative cultures on three different days means that you're no longer infectious. Guys, not one negative culture. The key number here is three, and then you're free. Now, all these drugs are liver toxic, so some instructors use the acronym RIPE. R for refampin, we call red fampin. Since there's orange and red tears, urine, and sweat. Or we call refampin, since your body fluids are red like a wreath. Now, the three key points here is, number one, red and orange tears, urine, and sweat are normal. So teach patients these key words. Wear glasses instead of contacts due to the discoloration of tears. Huge NCLEX tip. Number two is oral contraceptives are ineffective. To basically deactivate the pill. So key words here are use non-hormonal backup birth control. And third thing is monitor for jaundice since it's very liver toxic. That was actually an ATI question. Now I is for INH, also called isoniazid. Now this is the most tested TB drug, guys, so get your pen and paper, write these things down. We made this acronym to help you remember all the tested key points. So just remember the acronym INH. I for it interferes with the absorption of B6. Now the key term is low vitamin B6, usually equals peripheral neuropathy. Since B6 is needed to develop the myelin sheath, which helps the muscles move, guys, we teach the patients to take vitamin B6, 25 to 50 milligrams per day. Now, don't be tricked. Guys, it's B6 or B complex. Not folic acid, not vitamin D, not even B12. Guys, these are the most commonly chosen distractors. Only B6, so remember, get your fix with B6 or B complex. Now, N is for neuropathy, as mentioned before. Guys, the key term here is peripheral neuropathy. We are reporting new numbness, tingling extremities, and ataxia, basically the inability to walk. Now, H is for hepatotoxicity, AKA liver toxic. So we're monitoring and reporting immediately these key terms. Jaundice, or yellowing of any type to the skin and sclera, basically the eyes. Dark urine was a huge NCLEX tip. Big keyword to remember. Now, fatigue was mentioned in multiple content areas, as well as elevated liver enzymes, AST and ALT. Guys, we hold the medication. This is definitely induced hepatitis. And lastly, we teach no ETOH, or aka no alcohol, and limit acetaminophen. Huge common distractor to reduce alcohol consumption. Guys, that's a big no-no. We're talking zero alcohol, zero tolerance, so don't get tricked. Now, P is for parazinamide. Guys, this did not come up once in over 10,000 questions. So it's a nice to know, but definitely not a need to know. Now, E is for ethambutol. So we use the word E for eyes. Guys, the huge key point here is we report blurred vision or color changes. This information came up in multiple sections. So we teach the patient to have baseline eye exams and routine eye exams. Guys, big eye appointments for ethambutol. Now for the top three missed questions from this section. A patient is newly prescribed isoniazid, or INH, to treat active tuberculosis, that TB. What instructions are the most important to teach the patient? Select all that apply, your favorite questions on. So INH, guys, is our acronym. I for it interferes with D6, N for neuropathy numbness, and H for hepatotoxicity. Guys, we're thinking about this before we even start looking at the eye. So option number one, monitor for numbness and tingling. Yes, guys, that is neuro numbness, and we monitor for that. Option number two, report blurred vision. No, that's an ethambutol for the eyes, not INH. Option three, use additional forms of birth control. No, guys, that's for rifampin. Number four, avoid wine at night. Yes, always avoid alcohol. We're calling zero tolerance for the hepatotoxicity. 
Option number five, we notify the HCP if the urine turns dark. Yes, guys, dark urine is bad. Again, we're monitoring for that H, hepatotoxicity. And lastly, B6 daily. Yes, I is for it interferes with the B6. Now, question number two here. Which statement by the patient requires further teaching? Again, a select all that apply. So we're looking for the no-nos here, the incorrect statements. So number one, yes, it's okay to have sex with lesions present while on a cyclovir. Guys, no, that's a huge no-no. We're avoiding sex while herpes lesions are present. Number two, it is normal for rifampin to cause red urine. Yes, guys, that's what we call it, red rifampin. Totally normal for rifampin to cause red and orange body fluids. And number three, it is normal for rifampin to cause yellow sclera, basically yellowing of the eyes. Guys, no, yellow sclera or the eyes usually means that it's jaundice, which is liver toxicity. So in any case scenario, it's not normal for any drug to cause yellow sclera. Usually mean, again, hepatotoxicity. Now option number four, I will take vitamin B12 on INH. No guys, INH, we take vitamin B6. Now our last question here, a patient with TB has been taking FM butyl for two months. Which adverse effect should be reported to the HCP? Select all that applies. Guys, before even looking at the options, we're saying FM butyl starts with an E, E for eyes, and the two biggest things for the eyes, blurred vision and color changes. So option number one, red and orange tears. Guys, that's not FM butyl. That's normal for red fampin, those red and orange tears. Option two, blurred vision. Yes, guys, report the eyes. How about three, new numbness and tingling. Not FM butyl, that's INH problem. Option four, there it is, the colored eyes. Guys, yes, the eyes again. And number five, the elevated liver enzymes. Not an butyl problem, usually rifampin or INH. All right, guys, that wraps it up for anti-infectives. Make sure to download.